Welcome to The Struggle is Real, a show for 20-somethings that are trying to figure out adulting. I'm your host, Justin Peters. Each episode, we focus on solving a problem that we will face throughout this defining decade that wasn't covered in the classroom. This could include topics about our career, health, relationships, and money. Let's get into it. With New Year's quickly approaching, I'm guessing you've been thinking about how you want to spend your free time in 2022. Friends, family, and your health are all great choices. But I want to dangle one more idea out there, a side project. A side project is something you do aside from your primary job. But unlike hobbies, they have a sense of effort and thoughtfulness in their approach. Examples could be starting a blog, creating an app, or forming a band. Side projects are a great way to learn new skills, meet people, and develop a sense of purpose outside of your career. Heck, they might even lead to your next job. That was the case for my guest today. At the beginning of 2019, Alex Williams started a podcast to improve his listening skills. Exposing himself to podcast and media in general substantially changed the trajectory of his career. Since his start, Alex has hosted nine podcasts and has produced 14. He has two podcast media companies called Mecca Radio and Polytropist.fm. This episode is meant to inspire you to start something new, redefine failure, and challenge you to bite off more than you can chew. But not too much, just enough. We aren't trying to choke you here. I hope you enjoy my conversation with the serial podcast creator, producer, and skillful listener, Alex Williams. Dude, Alex, uh, welcome to the podcast, man. Super excited to have this conversation. It's uh, We were talking beforehand. I haven't had the opportunity to interview someone I consider a friend in quite some time. And we found each other through podcasting, actually. I was on your show, and we've collaborated on multiple different projects since then. I've been on, I think, three, maybe four of your shows at this point I think in time. So, yeah, it, it, might, it might be, because I know we've done like one or two bonus episodes uh-huh. as well. And then Broken Bulbs, My Wax Museum. And yeah, podcasting is like my excuse to make friends and then talk to those friends uh, <laughs> is basically how I manage it. <laughs> I'm quickly figuring out that's that's a really great side benefit for me as well. And you already talked about a few of your podcasts. You have a ton of podcasts, but you never set out to be a podcaster. No. This all started with a habit or a skill, I guess, a skill that you are lacking. Can you share yeah. a little bit more about actually how you first created uh, your, your first podca- podcast creation and why you actually created it? Yeah. Yeah. So the, the skill you're talking about is listening. I was like the worst, the worst of the listeners. I would sit there constantly in every conversation and just like not even waiting my turn, but like expecting my turn, right? You know, you sit there, you're like, okay, finish up your story so that I can tell my much more interesting story. And then I started to realize like people hated being around me and it felt terrible. Like as a human being, that feels awful. Mm -hmm. But I realized like, okay, this is something I can work on. This is something I can change. And it is something like that I should change. And so in, uh, I think it was 2018, January, 2018, I was like new year. New Year's resolution, I'm going to start podcasting and I'm going to force myself to sit down and have a conversation with a friend and just to listen to them, just to sit and listen. And for the first little while, I had to kind of bite my tongue, like, don't say anything, just let them tell their story, just let them, you know, share their interesting story. And, and slowly over time, I realized like, wow, people like have really interesting things to say and to share and really interesting experiences I can learn from. And so that listening to people was really hard at first, like almost impossible. And then now I like to think I've gotten better at it uh, through, you know, the hundreds now hundreds of interviews that I've done. It's interesting. I I actually think you're, you're right. We usually come from this like selfish lens where we feel like we can tell some of the best stories Mm-hmm. And you transition, once you allow yourself to be an engaged listener, you do realize that other people are super fascinating as well. Um, and I love that about podcasting because it continues to remind me that. Yeah. And it's not just that other other people are interesting, but it's other people around you are interesting. That's something that I always try and hit home with My Wax Museum in particular, the first show I started four years ago is that the people around you have interesting stories to tell. The, the cashier, the guy on the bench, the guy on the bus, your wife, your, your kids, 
right? All of these people that we just interact with on a daily basis, whether professionally or in a specific relationship or just randomly, like everybody has a unique and fascinating story to, to share. And I think, you know, if, if I was going to change the world in one magical way, if I was going to wave my hand, it would be make everybody better listeners, make everybody fascinated by each other. And specifically, not the people on TV, not the celebrities we see, but the, the people that we just coincidentally happen to know. What do you think is different about your approach with listening now that you've done 100 plus, probably way more than 100 plus interviews? Yeah. 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 Actually, funny enough, I just interviewed my 176th person on, on my wax museum. And then that's not including the hundred plus people that I've interviewed on broken bulbs. Um, what was the question again? Sorry. I got, (laughs) yeah, no, what your approach to listening, what do you feel like is different from episode number one of my wax museum Mm. to Alex today? Yeah. So in episode number one, if you go back and listen to it, it's with my buddy, Seth, and you can probably hear me sitting there like, okay, I got I to gotta ask a question. I, you know, I really got to think about this. And I'm biting my tongue and trying to not share my own perspective. And then now I just go into it with just obsessive curiosity, right? Just sit there and just, I'm just, I'm just fascinated. Tell me more about that. I'm constantly asking people, okay, so you mentioned this. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? And, and just doing that, like coming at all of these things, all of these interactions with this air of curiosity rather than with this, uh, okay, this is my job. Okay. You know, that, I think that's the biggest difference is back then I had to do it and I had to force myself to do it. And now it's, it's starting to shape out much more, much more naturally. Do you mind if I share a quick story that kind do of it, relates please. to that? So I interviewed a, a friend today. Uh, her name's Allie. And throughout the conversation, most of the conversation on this episode was about something that I happened to be in disagreement with her with. And I kept asking more questions and I was just fascinated asking deeper and deeper questions. And then after the interview, she asked me my opinion on that subject. And I, I told her and she's like, what? She was confused because the whole time I was curious and I was curiously listening to what she was saying and asking deeper questions, asking her to elaborate and asking her to share her personal experience with that without me being like, listen, that's really cute that you think that, but actually I think this, and she had no idea. And I think that was a moment for me where I realized like, oh, like I'm actually actively listening to people and I'm not sitting there thinking, how can I convince them to be on my side, but more, how can I be more understanding to their perspective? And we've had a conversation like that similar. We talked offline where we think a lot of political issues and even just a lot of macro issues might be solved with this intent to listen and explore curiosity and just understand that people are allowed to come into a conversation with a different perspective and you can learn and gain something from that. And there doesn't need to be some other agenda behind that conversation overall. (laughs) Yeah. Like you don't need to be sitting there trying to convince somebody. It's really interesting um, because everybody, you, you have your opinions, right? You have your beliefs, your ideals, your opinions, whatever it is. And everybody has theirs they feel just just as justified in their beliefs and opinions as you do in yours. And I think when you enter conversations with that perspective, with that, you know what, they, they have whatever it is in their head, they have justified reasons to think this. And when you go in with that charity uh, and with that intention to just learn about it, you're going to have so many more interesting conversations and so much more appreciation for people as well. Yeah, one thing I, I, I learned is the best way to convince somebody of something is to allow them to convince you otherwise. And if you really approach that conversation like that, like you have no intention on convincing them and, and you're fully ingrained and, and you're trying to understand it from their perspective, 
you're going to have a conversation come out like Allie, where she's got to ask you at the end, like, so what do you think about it? And then all yeah. of a sudden, she's probably way more adept to listen to your side of the story now that she's felt like she's been heard and right. understood. And you've put in the effort and energy to really try to put yourself in her shoes. Yeah, I would almost call that reciprocal curiosity, right? If you're curious about somebody, chances are they're going to be curious back because I mean, it feels nice, right? Like I'm sitting here getting interviewed by you. When, when you ask me questions, well, Alex, what do you think about this? I'm like, well, 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 let me tell you about this. I'm much more open to you as a human being because it's clear you're creating the space for me to share my opinion and share my thoughts. And, and I think if you can do that, I mean, podcasting is a great teaching tool, but then taking that outside of podcasting and applying it, you know, in just regular interactions, I think that's huge too. So we're going to use your podcast, um, the different projects that, that you've worked on as launching points to develop your story arc throughout mm -hmm. this conversation. And you've already shared a little bit about my wax museum and that mm -hmm. really kind of being the beginning. Yep. Another podcast that you created was called people of home. Mm -hmm. Where was that in your storyline? Was this after my wax museum? The, the people of home is such an interesting thing because I never think about it. And then every time, every now and then it'll like pop into my head and I'll be like, oh yeah, that was an interesting project. I think I actually started it. Maybe the, the, I think the idea of it came in the same year that I first started my wax museum. So in 2018, and then, uh, so it was the second project, second podcast project that I was like, I'm going to do this. And then it was a year after so it was like January, February 2019, that I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this creative project. And then it didn't work. And so then nine months later, I like restarted it, kind of like I almost rebooted this project. And then I tried to carry on. And then I took the it's, it was like this whole, whole thing. It was a project I thought would be really interesting. And it just kept not working for so many different reasons. What was the general premise of the show? Yeah, so the, the premise was the people of home. So uh, these people, they live in a country called home, super creative, it's their, it's their home. And the idea I wanted to create was like, what would, be, what would it be like to start a country from scratch? And the, the podcast would be kind of the news of this, of this country. And then the people listening to the podcast, the audience would be the citizens and they would be deciding on different policies and suggesting different policies. And so it was this really ambitious project that you really need like a critical mass of people to actually like do anything with it. I still think it's like a cool idea, but there's no way I'm like popular enough <laughs> to like make something like that happen. And then you also have to find like the specific niche of people. Uh, to to come in and be like, hey, maybe we should throw this in the constitution. Or what about this electoral system? What do you think about this? And oh, I'm going to run for this. You know, it takes a lot. And uh, so I was definitely underprepared. Clearly, it wasn't a sustained success for mm -hmm. you. But no. through my research with you, it's been, it, it popped up a few different times. You have this like really wholesome, approach and outlook to your creative projects that mm -hmm. you really don't define them as this like success or failure. You really mm -hmm. do look at each one as like, this is an opportunity for me to learn. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, I think that's totally fair. I definitely look at some projects and say like, ah, eh, it failed in like these regards, but I always have these lessons to take away from them. Right. Uh, because it, <laughs> The people of home, I learned a lot about podcast editing, right? Because it was, it was a challenge. It pushed me. And so I learned a lot more about editing. I also learned more about like organizing people and how to get people involved. I learned a lot about how to bring different pieces of a story together. And so, yeah, you're right. When, when I'm talking about these projects that have gone by the wayside, each one has been a learning experience. Each one has given me something that I've been able to take onto the next project and say, okay, you know what, that didn't work, but I'm interested in this. Let's pull that out, transplant it over here and apply the things that I learned in this failed project 
and, and try it somewhere else and see how I can grow in this other area. Yeah, that's true. And I see all great creatives follow a similar path where mm -hmm. it's more so about creating those opportunities to learn. And if something isn't working, moving on to the next thing, but mm -hmm. also making sure you evaluate what you learned from that experience. And you mentioned one, like this, this was your playground or launching path into mm -hmm. podcast production and really understanding the back end of podcasting. I know one story that popped up was when you ruined some guest uh, voice and like their mom, I think, reached out to you and was like oh, scolding you. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, that did happen. You know, all of these things, it's like, okay, so I, what happened with that specific story, I interviewed my friend Lyndon and then if, for whatever reason, the audio, the audio doesn't work, right? Like something happened and I've tried going back and finding the original audio file so that I can try and make something work so that I can make it sound better because yeah, his mom like confronted me about it. She's, she, you know, she was very clearly upset, right? What, what did you do to my son's voice? And, uh, cause that's most of the people who listen to the podcast is my guests, moms. I, that's what I say is, <laughs> is my target audience. And, uh, and so I, I went in and I couldn't find the file. I couldn't find the file. So something important I learned from that is I back up, I have a backup of the original file of every single podcast I've recorded since about that time I could go back and I know exactly what the file would be called. I have a naming sequence, like I've learned lessons. And then I, I make sure that I find little ways to prevent those things from happening in the future so that I can always make sure that I create the best product I can. And speaking of lessons learned, the broken bulbs is like, I, would you classify that as like maybe your, your pinnacle project right now, or like the, um, at, at, at up, up until a podcast we're going to talk about near here at the end of the story, it seemed like maybe like your flagship um, podcast. Yeah. So I have an interesting relationship with broken bulbs because most of my, most of my projects are very anthropologically focused. They're very like people driven. Broken bulbs is the same way. I, I'm focused on people's experiences, people's stories, what they learn from those experiences but it takes this much more entrepreneurial bent than what you see in my other projects where it's really just focused on the individual. And so Broken Bulbs, I would say is like the, the one podcast that I've done that I look at and, and say like it was a success in, in the way that it turned out largely how I wanted it to turn out. I started recording it six months before the first episode aired. And then I went through and I spent hours and hours and hours editing the first episode to the way that I wanted it edited. And then I found the sound that I wanted. And then I've been able to carry on with that sound. So in that way, like it's absolutely uh, the most successful project from a standpoint of the way I've learned to produce it, right? It's, it's kind of this great application of all these other skills that I've learned through all these other projects that did not work out at all. And it has a very defined structure to it. Um, so why don't you expand on that a little bit? The concept of what a broken bulb is, I think is interesting. So maybe if, if you can explain what you mean by that, because I think the name lends itself really well to, to what the premise of this show is, um, and then walk us through kind of how or what the structure looks like. Yeah. Yeah. So broken bulbs, it comes from the idea that they made, you know, a thousand, you know, bulbs that didn't work before they figured out one design that did. And I think life is a lot that way. I've done a lot of podcasts that didn't work before I found the ones that it's like, yeah, this, this works. And I like how this is shaping out. And so broken bulbs is kind of taking that idea and saying, we all have broken bulbs. So I have guests on and you're right. It is the most structured of my shows. It is super structured the way that I have guests on. You've been a guest on there. And it's so clear as like, okay, you come in, we're going to sit down. I'm going to introduce you this way. You say, yes, no, maybe so. And then I introduce the bulb and then you tell the story. And so we always get this beautiful story. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's tragic, right? Sometimes it's really sad. Sometimes we're laughing about the failure, about the mistake, about whatever happened. And then at the end of it, it always wraps up with a lesson. And I think that's the most important part. 
we tell the story, you know, that's really nice. But like, what, what did you get out of that? And so that's the way we always wrap it up. And uh, yeah, that's the, that's the main structure of the podcast. It's only 10 to 15 minutes, nice in and out. And it's three times a week. So because of that, because it's three times a week, I had to create the structure and uh, not just on mic, not just a structure on mic, but also on the back end. How do I take that and how do I edit it and how do I make sure that it's getting out on time? Yeah. Yeah. And I want to put a pin in that because I'm about to come back to that thread there, but to, yeah. to finish up another conversation that I have going on in my head as well is as podcasters, we get this privilege, especially podcasts where we invite guests on our show and kind of circling back to what we were originally talking about with our, our very first conversation around listening. We get this opportunity to sit down and really digest uh, other people's stories and learning lessons from them. So from listening to so many broken bulbs, is there an underlying theme or a major takeaway that this collection of stories illustrates? Yeah. I mean, a lot of the broken bulbs have similar themes, you know, like make sure you're creating the right relationships with people. Um, make sure you do your research beforehand. Uh, you know, there are a lot of common themes between these episodes, but I think after listening to literally hundreds, hundreds of these stories now, um, the, the, big takeaway, the overall takeaway is that we have a lot of different ways of looking at failure and a lot of different ways as to how we process failure. Mm -hmm. So some of some guests will come on, like I mentioned earlier, it, it'll be a joke. It'll like, they're, they're like, so I did this thing and it was so embarrassing. I can't believe I forgot what the bride looked like. And I showed up to film this wedding and I couldn't find the bride because she wasn't wearing her wedding dress yet. And I had to figure that out. And it's this comedy of errors. And then there are these other stories where it's like, and that's the day, like my life was ruined. Mm. Like it was, it was done because I, because I made this mistake. And so there are all these different ways of looking at failures and there's different ways to process it as well. And I think the biggest thing that I've learned from that is that there, there are some really unhealthy ways to process it. Like some people go on not realizing that like they made a mistake. I get people coming on and they are, they're talking about their mistake, um, but it's framed as somebody else's mistake. That happens mm. too. And so that's been a big takeaway for me is making sure that when I make a mistake that I you know, can acknowledge it's my mistake. I can think of ways to solve that mistake and then allowing myself to move on from that mistake and live like a full life without it, it weighing on me. I think those are kind of the biggest takeaways. Uh, if you don't mind that, that big dump on, on, on you, that was a lot of stuff. No, but, no, that, yeah. that, that last piece that you're talking about there is actually really interesting. I, I guess I never put myself in that perspective that it's such a good takeaway, actually tangible skills for you listening mm. to so many people articulate their broken bulbs. And now, so getting that opportunity to, recognize the people that you feel have taken ownership in it and those that are still maybe processing it and, and trying to work towards ownership because you, yeah. you have this really beautiful way of just allowing people space to, yeah. to, to like share. And, and I'm sure that's kind of like a little bit of a therapy session. Totally. I I've had multiple people tell me afterwards, they're like, huh, that was very therapeutic. <laughs> uh, and and I mean, I think that ties it back to listening, right? Like it, it feels good when people listen to us. So you were talking about really getting things done. Like now you, you have multiple shows, you do podcast production as well. And um, so you have lots of moving parts all the time. So I think people would be surprised uh, uh, who you were and, and where you've gotten to. I, I would have just knowing you now, I would have just assumed you were always this type A and like um, for example, like you already have all of your 2022 schedule for broken bulbs, pretty much set and finalized and, and episodes actually like completed and ready to go. Uh, I, I am not quite that way. Uh, I, I, I work ahead, but, but I not that far ahead. So I, you had that interesting, um, you were talking with somebody and you had this like interesting thought around work will fill the time that you allot it. And, yeah. um, I think there might be some things to take from that and just to paint a picture of who you were, you 
<laughs> you, you were telling the story about this last minute book report that you had and yeah. by like divine luck, like one of the, one of the things that you had to do for this book report was map out the, the, like to draw a map of like the actual story of the book. And it was like the day before, or maybe even the morning of you were working on this book report and you opened up the book and it was just one of those fantasy books that already had like a map laid out in it on one of those first pages. So, so how do you become someone who was this like notorious procrastinator all throughout your like childhood to somebody that now has all of 2022 podcast scheduling done? <laughs> yeah, I think it, I mean, first of all, look at you, Mr. Research. I didn't even realize I ever told that story like on the internet <laughs> at all. And, and I, I like you bring these things up and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, that is, you know, I did, did tell that story, I guess. Uh, yeah. So planning things out and like changing, it comes down to knowing yourself. Like, again, going back to that realization and acceptance of your failures, of your mistakes. Like I realize I'm a procrastinator. I will procrastinate everything I possibly, I possibly can. And I, can I change? I'm not really sure, but either way, I'm doing things in order to prevent myself having to, you know, do these things last minute. So something I do, like you were talking about with broken bulbs, having these things planned out, I work ahead. Okay. I know next year I have to have X many broken bulbs episodes come out. I also know that next year I plan to be traveling a little bit. I'm not going to be able to record if it's a Sunday night and I need an episode for Monday. Like, I I'm sorry, I'm on a 12 hour flight. Like what, I what am I supposed to do? Right. And so I know that I need to work ahead. And so when I'm in the mood for something, I like eat that mood up. I'm like, okay, I'm here. My mindset right now is editing. I'm, I'm ready to edit. Oh, does that mean I'm going to be editing to 3 a.m.? Yeah, maybe. Like I, I do it then because I know I'm ready to do it. And so I think I take advantage of the moments when I'm ready to do it and just like use those moments like to just get ahead and then that way, okay, the episode's already scheduled. I don't need to think about what's coming out tomorrow. It's, it's ready to go. It's, it's done. That, that seems like such simple advice, but I don't think uh, I've done the same thing now where hmm. if I have that feeling and it's one of those activities where sometimes I'm just going to have to be in the mood. So I'll translate this to running. Um, yeah. I, I run every single day and often on the weekends, it will be one of those things where I don't have to immediately do it because, you know, sometimes you just, you just got to do it. You're hitting a deadline or, and, or just only fits into a certain segment of your day, but the weekends aren't like that for me. I usually get up and it's a little bit slower morning for me. I know I need to go out for my run at some point in time. And as soon as I feel that itch of like, okay, I think I could probably go for a run right now. I immediately act on that yep. and, and get the shoes, go, get the shoes on and get out the door. I yep. think some other people probably have some of those moments where it's like, oh man, I could really do this right now. And they sit on that feeling for too long versus that whole like five second thing where it's like, okay, five, four, three, two, let's go, let's go. Yeah. Like, and you just yeah. gotta continue to move that forward. So I'm interested, what helps you A, generate that momentum, but yeah. B, also maintain what you call flow? Yeah, so I leave a lot of extra time. I am like the spare, spare time king, right? If I, if I say I don't have time for something, Usually I'll also say, like, I'll make it clear. That's not a priority. Like I'm not prioritizing that right now because I have something else going on or I'm in the mindset for something else. And so the past few months here, like September, October, especially I was like, record, 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 schedule those things. I get in the mood. And then when I'm like, when I'm in the mood, like I said, I just take advantage of that. If you let it pass by, if I sit there and say, oh, well, I, you know, I will have more time later. It's like, no, no, Alex, like Alex, you are in the mood right now. Take advantage of that. I think that's the, that's the, that's the biggest thing to developing that momentum is like when you have that little, little itch, like, oh, it's okay to do that now do it. And then as you're doing it, you're, you're sitting there, I, I'm editing a podcast and it's like, well, I may as well, I may as well do the rest, you know? So a lot of the time I'll have like, 15 podcast files open that need to be edited. I'm like, okay, yeah, um, I'll edit these today. 
you know, I'll focus on these today and I'll get as far as I can on that day, get it done. And then the next day I'll come back to it. But having those things open, making it easy to do those things as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like having a process that you follow every time that helps as well. Right. And I, I, you know, with you, with your show, you have a flow, you have a process that you follow and that helps you keep things in line, get a spreadsheet. Trust me, it'll change your life. Uh, I'm very much so a systems person, maybe mm. too far a systems person. Sometimes my systems drive what I, what, what we're talking about around flow here. Um, yeah. and it's like, I'll like finish my to-do list. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, uh, what should I do now? And like right. just allowing myself to do whatever I feel like doing in that time is uh, still somewhat of a struggle for me on, really? on occasion. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think so. But also like you too, I want, want to allow myself to continue going because you're, you're right. Once you generate that momentum and, and you're, you're like in something and if I only set out to do this for 20 minutes, like editing, sometimes I'll, I'll lie to myself and be like, Hey, I know you're not in the mood to edit right now. Just do 10 minutes, like get in, yep. set the file up and, uh, uh, clean up the beginning and like set a 10 minute timer and yeah, nine out of 10 times that timer hits. I'm like, nah, turn it off. Like, let me finish up what I got going on. And then an hour and a half later, I'm like done with the episode and everything's finalized. And I got it uploaded to the podcast hosting service and everything. I'm like, yeah. Holy cow. I'm glad I did that. <laughs> it's done. And it's done. It's amazing. So I do this. Uh, sometimes I'm a big Star Trek fan. So I'll like put on the latest episode of Star Trek Discovery on my one monitor. And I'm like, you know, I could be doing something right now. And so I'll do the things in the podcast editing that don't require my ears. And so I'll set up the file. I'll, I'll organize things. I'll make a few cuts that I know need to be in certain places and I'll get things ready. I'll make some notes. And then, oh, the episode's over. Well, perfect. I got these files open, throw, you know, throw the audio onto audit or on audition and start rolling through, rolling through the actual edit. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's amazing when you just kind of like, Oh, those simple things. Great example of this. I have a buddy, he's a bodybuilder. Okay. This guy is ripped, like insanely jacked. And he told me, he's like, yeah, well, uh, also his bedroom growing up was like Zelda everything. And so he's like big into gaming too. But he told me, he's like, yeah, well, um, I started just doing pushups during the loading screens. Hmm. And then now, now he's a bodybuilder, you know, like you just build these little habits just whenever you can just like make a little habit out of it. And, and you'll find that bef before you know it, you're scheduling a year in advance and you have this, you know, whole, whole thing planned out and you're getting ahead and then you can relax. Right. Yeah. That's the amazing thing is now I, I get to have that spare time when somebody says, Hey, can we go do this? I'm not sitting there thinking, Oh, I need to rush this edit out. I'm thinking, yeah, I can do that because I've, you know, the next week is covered. Yeah. And, and, and one ca caveat to the systems piece to it as well. I, I see people that know a system is, you should eventually be getting to designing a system to help with the efficiency piece. But, and, and I'm at fault of this sometimes as well. I try to build out the whole system, like where I want the end system to look like. And then it just, it's so cumbersome and yeah. not really fitting what I need. So I often, now I often start a little bit smaller and I'm like, okay, what's like the biggest pain point in this whole process? Let's design a system or more efficient way to do this so that mm -hmm. I can finish else what else I need to do. And maybe that's a little bit, the rest of the process is a little bit more ad hoc. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like I think you, you can't create a system for something you've never tried doing before. Yeah. Right. Like if, if I had never podcasted and then I'm like, this is exactly how the podcast system is going to look. I'm going to do it this way. And then I'm going to edit it like this. And then I'm going to do this, this, this. And then by the end of it, I'm like 20 hours over budget and it's like, oh, that didn't work at all. Right. And so then you need to, you need to kind of have that ad hoc stuff in there, right. Where you're like trying things out and then you look back on it and say, okay, I think I know who I am in this scenario. And I think I know how to work with myself and create a system that will help me work efficiently and successfully and create something that I'm proud of. Yeah. I think that's, uh, the most important thing um, that you can do with your creative project, especially if it's, you know, content creation, especially if you're making something regularly. 
yeah, not biting off too much more than you can chew at one time. Um, I think yeah. it's important as well. Or, or maybe just a, a little bit too much for yes. you to chew at one time. Challenge yes. yourself. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Do you ever think about like how crazy it is that my wax museum was started because you wanted to be a list, just become better at listening. And now you are full-time podcasting and podcast production. Like that little decision to do this because of that has led to what you do now for, for a living. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like the weirdest thing. It's one of those things where you like wake up and look around. You're like, how did I get here? You know, like what, what did I, what did I do? Right. And I think that's why it's important to try little things. Yes. Right. And, uh, and for me, you know, that little thing was to improve a skill, you know, associate your projects with something that you're trying to really improve, right? Mm. Forget about this whole, you know, need to, oh, I'm going to have this many subscribers and have this many listeners, right? These key performance indicators, forget about those and focus on, you know, the process and what you're going to gain just from the process, because you're going to be stuck doing the process for a long time before you're going to end up really feeling satisfied with the, the key performance indicators, the downloads, the views, the subscribers, right? Yeah. And I think that's, that's a huge thing for me as well. I would agree with that. And I've been on this soapbox lately about every 20 something needs to have something outside of their career that, that brings them purpose and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And I bring that into context. I, sometimes I get pushback on, we don't, I, I don't have enough time to do anything else like that. And if we were just to bring some math out here, there's a hundred and 68 hours in a week and mm -hmm. let's give eight hours a day to, to sleep. That leaves us 112. Yep. I'm going to just give you those 12 hours as maintenance things, two hours, you know, one and a half to two hours a day. You got to feed, you got to bathe yourself, et cetera. Yep. Um, that leaves a hundred hours a week for you to, to kind of make what you want out of it. So if we yeah. say 40 of that is for my job, that's how I pay the bills. Yep. 60, you have 60 hours left. That is one and a half careers that you have of free time. And, and granted, I, I know you also have conflicting, um, you have conflicting goals of like, I, if you're a parent or if you, um, need to spend time with friends or you need to take care of your health and wellness and all of these, these certain things. But I think people have more time than they think. And some of these yeah. projects that can expand a skill set and maybe scratch some curiosity or pursue an interest might only need to take 12 to 15 hours of your week. Like it doesn't need to be this like all encompassing, all in, all consuming side hustle. It could start mm. really small, maybe even a couple hours a week. Yeah. And you can start developing tangential skills on top of maybe what you're doing with your career and also pursuing something that might end up being something that you really want to pivot to in the long run. Like podcasting for me, I've I've learned so many things about marketing, about media, about guest relations, about being a conversationalist organization. And I really do see myself after sunsetting my career, bringing this into a bigger part of my life. I, you were like a perfect prime example of that, of somebody that like this, this developed or this like initial project really developed into like the skill set you have now with, with podcast production. And now yeah. you get to do it full time. And like, yeah. You mentioned, I'm going to go travel now. You're going to probably do a little bit of production work um, while you travel, but you get to like have this period of your life that you get to designate towards pursuing adventure and travel and um, novelty and things like that. Yeah. Well, and podcasting, like you're talking about with this, this small amount of time that you need to devote to it. When I started My Wax Museum, it's like, okay, uh, yeah, a few hours a week, right? It's like this, this easy flash in the pan. I could go do other things. I could hang out with friends. I had my job, whatever. Right. Fantastic. And now podcasting has become this like all consuming thing of my life. Right. My friends are from podcasting. My social life is through podcasting. My, uh, my job is through podcasting. My, I go for a walk and Oh, what do I do? I listen to a podcast, right? It's become this all, all consuming thing, but I really enjoy it even these adventures I'm planning to go on, these travels I'm planning to go on, it involves research and interviews for other, other podcast projects. So, you know, give yourself, you know, a little bit of a hobby, try it out. Maybe you try woodworking. Maybe that's not your thing. Maybe try sewing. Maybe that's not your thing, but maybe it is. 
right? You don't know. Yeah. And I think an important thing from you, and I know you mentioned it early in the episode too, A, not tying it to vanity metrics, if it's downloads yeah. or listens, or even thinking about monetizing this, what you call is, is a project where you just got to, mm. um, um, you know, like I said, not putting those pressures outside influences or external pressures on influencing your, your work around this project, but at the same time, tying it to something that would be of value to you, regardless of where that project went, like you with listening, um, yeah. you knew at the end of it, if you stopped podcasting after six months, you started to develop and hone your skill of listening. Yeah, exactly. And, and you and I have talked about this before off mic and on mic, I'm sure <laughs> where, you know, the, the relationships you create through these hobbies are really helpful as well. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and we use podcasting as an example because we're both involved in podcasting, but it could go for anything. You get involved with the community a little bit. You make some great connections. Maybe it's not always your thing, but you still met these great people, right? Now I'm like, oh yeah, I know some people in Texas. And oh, you're, you're like, oh yeah, my Canadian friend up in Calgary, like I, I know Alex, right? And so I think that's a big part of it as well is, is yeah, getting away from those vanity metrics and letting yourself be kind of engrossed in this community, in the things that you learn along the way, and uh, and allowing it to help you grow as an individual in whatever way that hobby or that skill or whatever it is, is going to provide you. Yeah. So Alex, as we conclude our conversation today, I do want to give you a little bit of space to talk about an upcoming project that you have, the mm -hmm. creation story, super fascinating. I've heard you mention that or say that you wouldn't start a podcast unless you're really excited about the topic and the structure. So with that in mind, what initiated this interest in this new project? And um, has there been anything about it that's been surprising fuel for continuing this? Yeah, actually, uh, I mean, tons, tons of surprises and things that have fascinated me. So I actually came up with the idea for the creation stories uh, way back at the same time, I thought of broken bulbs, actually, I, I thought of them both. And I actually had the cover art done for them both, like at the same time. Uh, but then this one took a little longer to, to get going because it is so much more of a, a challenge. And I, I realized that really early on. And so in this, in this podcast, we're going to be exploring a, a variety of different creation stories. We're starting off in the first season with the seven days of creation as told in the Hebrew Bible as well as uh, there are some details in the Quran that they talk about and uh, in the rest of Abrahamic tradition as well. And so this fascinated me because I love people and I love stories. And this is a huge story that is a huge part of where people say we came from, uh, how people derive meaning in the world. And I wanted to explore that a little bit. Now, when I started the podcast, when I started recording for the podcast, I thought, okay, this will this will be interesting. It'll be pretty simple. I thought, yeah, I could probably work on a few seasons at the same time. And this is the biting off more than I could chew part. Uh, and I realized in my first interview, when I interviewed this Jewish cantor, I realized I'm like, there is so much more to this than I could have thought. I thought I was going to be telling a story. I thought I was going to, you know, be fascinated by the history around it, all of that. I was like, yeah, that's going to be really cool. And then as I did that first interview, I was like, wow, there's not just the story. There's not just history here. There's not just anthropological value in this podcast, but there's also value in the story itself and in what we get out of the story, regardless of the background that you're coming at it from. There's something you can appreciate from this story, from the people who tell these stories and so it's given me more fire and excitement to work harder on the project. And so I'm doing this first season. And then on the second season, originally, I was like, yeah, the second season, you know, oh, I could do it later that year. I'm sure I could just interview somebody, you know, put it out. Very interesting, very fascinating stuff. And uh, then I realized I was like, no, no, I want to put like a ton of work into this. So this first season is coming out January 23rd. That's when the first episode airs. You're going to have a week. All seven episodes of the seven days story is going to come out in that first week. And then 
a year later, I'm going to be exploring some uh, local creation myths of the indigenous people who have inhabited the land I live on for thousands of years. And, uh, and just realizing that I can have that appreciation for these stories, regardless of my background, has given me that extra fire to go deeper with it, find out what it means to them now, what it meant to them back then, and what kind of like real world impact does that have? And uh, yeah, does that answer the question? It, it answers it plus some. Um, that was really, really well said. And I've enjoyed listening to it. You, um, I, I had the honor to become a beta listener for the show. So I'm halfway through it right now. Awesome. Um, it's been great. I mean, I, I think I left you a comment yesterday on your um, forum that it's like NPR quality stuff. Like you've really put in, you've really put a lot of thought and energy around, you know, combining these four people's story or interview into some sequential storyline. And it makes a lot yeah. of sense. And um, yeah, it was really fascinating. I, I've been yeah. blown away by it. I, uh, I, I, I'm kind of bummed that I haven't already have it, had it finished yet. I was prepping for our interview for this. So I was listening to, to you on a lot of different shows. And then I just picked that up yesterday because I finally got some free um, ear time to, to listen. Yeah. And I was like, dang, man, this is solid. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I think you know, it's one of those things like we're talking about biting off more than you can chew. Sometimes you bite off more than you can chew and then you find out, oh, maybe there's a different like chewing technique I can use, mm -hmm. right? There's something else I can do here. Uh, and you give yourself the time to chew it and to work through it. And that's really what I've done with this project. And I think, I think it's going to shape out for the better. Like I think when it airs, it's going to be something that I can look at and say like, Yes, I'm very proud I made that. And I can't wait to make more things of this caliber and of this quality. That's, that's what I'm aiming for. And I think it's going to be a really satisfying thing to be like four years into podcasting and I've, I've grown this much. It's again, one of those things you look back on and you're like, how did I get here? Like, what, what did I do? Yeah. Crazy where you've come from since episode one with Seth um, on the yeah, I Wax Museum. To that, eh? Yeah, I did. I yeah. did. Come on. You, you mentioned <laughs> it a few times I, in different interviews. And I was like, I got to go listen to this now. <laughs> and and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything you said, man, everything you said, I, I, same, same, same story though. And um, yeah. a, a lot, my, really my first 15 episodes of, of this podcast too, were um, in my terms, cringeworthy, but I leave those out there too, to, showcase where I've grown as right. a podcaster and what I've learned and also still being proud of that too. Cause I took yeah. the steps to begin yep. this project and I had the courage to publicly put out something like this, even though I wasn't, it wasn't perfect. I knew it wasn't perfect. I, I didn't even know if it was C quality yet. Um, yeah. And I would probably grade it differently than I would have graded it when I published it. But at the same time, I'm not taking that down. Like for me, I, I have a lot of pride and more so starting something and continuing to grow something than what this like end quality product has got to be overall. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think that's, that that's huge is, is the appreciation for your past, the appreciation for where yes. you came from. And I think when we have these, uh, these projects that we work on, you know, where, where we can see the original right? Where we can look back and say like, oh yeah, I have come a long way. I bet authors do that all the time. They look at their first book and they're like, that is garbage, <laughs> but, but you can still appreciate it because it, it taught you so many lessons and it's something that you got started with. So, you know, with your hobbies, I mean, I'm 25, right? The, the people listening probably somewhere in their twenties, right? We're all kind of in this phase of, what am I doing? Like, what do, what do I want to do? I had dinner with a buddy the other day and I asked him, he's the same age. I'm like, do you ever feel like a waste of space? Like, do you ever feel like just a burden on society in general? And he's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> it's like, cause we're not there yet. Right. Yeah. And, and that's okay. We're getting started. And I think that's the most important thing. Get started, get moving, work on things, practice things. And one day you're going to look back and be like, wow, like I'm, I made something of myself. Like I've done something, whether in this area or that other area, you've done something. Mm -hmm. And so I think appreciate where you've come from and look forward to where you're headed too. Mm. Very, very well said, man. So the creation story is out January 23rd, maybe a little bit early. 
um, if, if you're listening to this in, in real time, but I'm sure I'm going to catch some people afterwards. So if they're looking to go download it right now, I'm, sh- I'm assuming as long as it's after January 23rd, anywhere podcasts can be found, correct? Even even right now, uh, as we're recording it, the feed is up. There's a simple trailer on there that you can that you can find and listen to, uh, basically just giving you the Coles notes on what it is. Uh, but the feed is up wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can go and subscribe to that. Awesome. Anywhere else you'd like to point people? Yeah, Polytropus FM. Polytropus is the home of all of my projects, all of my loves, the projects that I really, really love. Uh, you can go to polytropus.fm. That's poly as in polyester and tropos as in troposphere.fm. Awesome, man. Final question for you, Alex. If you had the opportunity to teach a 16-week class to a group of graduating college seniors on a topic that isn't normally covered in the classroom, what would you teach and how would you teach it? This might be obvious and it might be low-hanging fruit. And I did, I did think about this beforehand but it would be listening. It would be, you know, we would spend that 16 weeks practicing listening to each other. Uh, And I mean, it could be useful, especially, you know, in a journalism setting, in an interview setting, in a podcast setting, especially long form, like what we're doing, but also in the day to day. And that's something I would like to make sure to get across as well. Is like these listening skills and these listening techniques, you can use anytime anywhere with any person just to make them feel more appreciated, right? It could be, you know, street epistemology is a great listening technique that you can employ. Uh, You can also, uh, when you respond back to people with what they've said, I did this when I was in customer service. Every time I asked somebody, how, how are you, right? You always greet somebody with, how are you, right? And nobody ever thinks anybody's listening to their response, but I would always parrot back whatever they said. If they said, oh, I'm fine. I'd say, oh, that's fine. You know, I would say that, say that back. So I would teach listening skills like that, uh, ways to make sure that people know that you're actively listening and then covered in there as well would be, you know, a sincere appreciation, uh, and finding ways to sincerely appreciate and be curious about people's stories and where they come from, regardless of how it relates to you or not. I love that. Alex. Always a pleasure, man. Super stoked that you finally got on the podcast. Um, really excited to, to see what's in store for you in the future. Justin, so many things and so many thanks to you for literally, I admire you as a host. This was fantastic. Thank you. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. If you like this conversation today, be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified about new episodes. If you want to connect with me, send me a message on Instagram. I'm at Justin Lee Peters. You can find show notes with links to everything we discussed today at justinpeters.co. This episode was produced by Gabby Dimeke. I'm your host, Justin Peters. Thanks for tuning in.